All right, how's it going? I am Flux Pavilion, and you're currently watching the RFM interview with me, Flux Pavilion. I guess my sound, the go-to word would be epic, I suppose. I kind of I try to do a lot of um, visualization. One of the main ones is <coughs> riding on a horse towards a volcano that's erupting while there's a princess. Everyone's running away from the volcano and there's a princess trapped at the base of the volcano and you're riding on a horse towards it. The kind of the general fantasy idea of that has inspired me for quite a lot of my tracks. So yeah, that's uh, imagine that visual, <laughs> yeah, that visual, and then that's kind of what my songs sound like. That's what I go for anyway. I don't know really. I guess I don't really try to look for what makes me different. I mean, I'm my music's different because it's made by me, and it's not made by anyone else. I guess, but um, I just kind of. Yeah, write whatever's in my brain. And I guess all the other artists write whatever's in their brain. So it's whoever's got the best brain comes up with the best songs, I suppose. But yeah, I've been doing a lot of singing and stuff on my stuff, like tracks recently. I used to just play guitar and sing. So I'm trying to incorporate how I got really got into songwriting into the electronic music that I've been discovering over the past few years. So yeah, hopefully we'll see how that pans out and do some kind of more songs rather than going towards the drop. Actually, just I'm going to write a whole bunch of songs on piano and then try to turn them into Flux Pavilion sounding tracks, which could be cool. So yeah, we'll find out, I guess. There's a, some guys that we got signed to the label called Brown and Gammon that are just awesome. Like, I just can't stop. Every time they send me any of their new stuff, it just become, it goes straight on my iPod. Uh, yeah, they've just been working on this kind of um, real electro kind of disco 80s style stuff recently. We yeah, in the process of putting together an EP, which is going to come out next year, like January, February time. But yeah, it's just it's my go-to stuff to listen to. So yeah, Brown and Gammon are damn cool. Hip hop and rap, for me as a as a writer, is I kind of I always write the song first, and I just write a beat, <coughs> and just think, well, I think a rapper would fit perfectly on this, and then becomes the process of just seeing. Cause a lot of times, like you just meet people at festivals and get their number and start talking, and it kind of like if I write a beat that's perfect for Sway, then I'll hit him up, and rather than trying to find a rapper, I'd be like, should we work on a song? I just kind of work on loads of beats all the time and then just be sending them out to and see if anyone anyone likes them really. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of it's weird. I write a lot of like hip hop style stuff, but it's not really the backgrounds that I come from. I like I never really grew up listening to loads of hip hop, so I don't really know anything about it. I just kind of I like it. P money um I have always liked, <clears throat> since he did Slang Like This with a friend of mine called Sook Knight, I put that out and just, yeah, loads of my friends have always been into grime and I never really got it. Like, grime was, it was so close to dubstep, but I never, <clears throat> it was never like just picking up the, the records and getting well into it. But then P Money was one of the first artists that really kind of took that sound and I really connected with it. So, the post, yeah, I just kind of, <clears throat> end up meeting him at festivals and shows and kept talking to him and got his number and then hit him up and then the same with Sway as well like I first heard Sway when he did the tracks with Yoda and just yeah just an incredibly good rapper and lyricist and oh, yeah, well, that's why I wanted to get them both on a track because I hadn't they'd never done a track together at all and I had came up with a concept where P Money's a super villain and Sway's a superhero and that's how the track is they're both kind of against each other 
and I still want to do a music video for it because I reckon it would look pretty cool with them both, both dressed up as superheroes and supervillains. But yeah, I had the concept and I had been talking to both of those about doing a track, so I was like, cool, let's get, a, get into a studio and do it. Organising two rappers into one studio on the same day is quite a task, but I managed it, which was cool. In terms of like how my music is received, it's all I just kind of think a lot of it is luck in terms of what people are gonna really connect to and what's gonna like make a track popular or unpopular. But I just, I, there's no way I can ever predict that at all. And if I try to predict it, I'll always just be trying to make the music that I think people wanna hear. So I just like, just wrote, got the EP until I was happy with it and then put it out with no really just expecting no one to like it really i think it's probably the best best way to do it as long as i like it <clears throat> but I, you can't really bank on the idea that the whole world's gonna love it you can hope and i was pretty happy with the response but yeah i didn't have i tried not to have any kind of mental idea of what i thought people would think about the ep and it's kind of generally been like that since i started writing music so i stick to it because i think if i wrote a track like well, like Double Edge on Blow The Roof, it was quite different, like a departure for me in terms of style. And I was well happy with it, but if I got the response that no one liked it and I listened to that, then I would never write a track like that ever again. But chances are I'm going to, no matter what. And the second or third or fourth one could end up being really good and something really special. But I've got to just let that happen, just keep writing loads of music because I want to write it rather than worrying about what people think about it. But yeah, I feel like Blow the Roof went down pretty well. This, this, everyone sings along, yeah. The Freeway Tour has been the biggest tour that I've done so far. So it's, yeah, this is the 50th show and we're still doing some European shows next year. But yeah, I think it's gonna be like 60 shows all in all for the whole Freeway Tour. And it's been awesome. Yeah, it's really good. It's like, take, I had all the circus guys um, like Rock Sonics and Brown and Gammon and Cookie Monster <coughs> and Schism and then now That's Sick just kind of all really good friends of mine it's just, we've all written loads of music together it's been pretty crazy I broke my arm two weeks into the American leg so I had to like yeah I was, went from the hospital to stage it was about 15 and a half hours from my arm snapping in half to being on stage because I was like I can't cancel a show I've told loads of different stories so, yeah, I keep making up. Google it and you'll find a much more interesting story than I'll tell you, than the truth. Fighting werewolves is a good one. It was around, it was around Halloween time. There's a lot of werewolves about. Had to protect my mates. So, yeah, fought, fought a whole bunch of them and got my arm snapped. Yeah, well, no one got hurt other than me, so that was quite good. But, yeah, breaking my arm was, <clears throat> was pretty crazy because it kind of um, made me think about what I'm actually doing. I had to do everything with one arm. So I had to do about 25 shows just with one arm. So I had to really consider exactly what I want to do rather than just kind of like winging it. I had to really work out. So I need to do that and then this and then that like to make it sound good, which has been really interesting way of looking at it rather than just getting up there and getting into it. I, had to, I couldn't really move because I was in loads of pain, I had to take loads of painkillers and then just had one arm to try and do a 75 minute set. So I came out, come out the other side with a much better understanding of kind of terms of performance and actually the technicality of being a DJ and what I'm doing up there, which is pretty handy. So yeah, if you want to get better at your job, then break your arm. <laughs> Countdown to the scientists. I'm gonna write lots of music, I'm just, in the process of starting a proper full album now, but it will be probably finished next year, but I imagine it won't come out till 2015. But I'm just gonna, yeah, keep on with the shows, I'm playing all sorts of shows all over, like the rest of the world. I've already got like Mexico and Argentina and Chile and Brazil, and just trying to take my music to other places where like the whole kind of streams of generalized access of kind of like the charts and radio and stuff. It's kind of like, yeah, I don't really imagine my songs being played on a radio in Brazil. I want to go there and play to the people and work out what they like and what they don't like and what parts of the music 
because there could be something in like Chile, some part of one song that they go crazy for that I don't even realize was good. And I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, there's this whole sound here that I'm not even paying attention to. So I'm going to India as well, which should be really cool. So I'm just looking to go around the world and explore, explore what people think about electronic music a little bit more. And then, yeah, take that and write an album and hopefully be able to present it like at the end of the year or 2015. I have been Flux Pavilion and I still am Flux Pavilion, but this is the end of the RFM interview. And thank you for watching. Big up.